Excerpts from the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, by Florence Scovel Shin. She said she possessed just $8 in the world. I said, good, go bless the $8 and multiply them, as Jesus Christ multiplied the loaves and the fishes. For he taught that every man had the power to bless and to multiply, to heal and to prosper. She said, what shall I do next? I replied, follow intuition. Have you a hunch to do anything or to go anywhere? Intuition means to be taught from within. Never violate a hunch. I spoke the following words for her. Infinite spirit, open the way for great abundance. For she is an irresistible magnet for all that belongs to her by divine right. There is always plenty on man's pathway, but it can only be brought into manifestation through desire faith, or the spoken word. Jesus Christ brought out clearly that man must make the first move. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Nothing stands between man and his highest ideals, and every desire of his heart, but doubt and fear. When man can wish without worrying, every desire will be instantly fulfilled. Speak these words aloud with power and conviction. I now smash and demolish, by my spoken word, every untrue record in my subconscious mind. They shall return to the dust heap of their native nothingness. For they came from my own vain imaginings. I now make my perfect records through the Christ within, the records of health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the square of life, the game completed. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So I spoke the word. I gave thanks that the woman would receive $3,000 at the right time in the right way. I told her she must have perfect faith and act her perfect faith. If one asks for success and prepares for failure, he will get the situation he has prepared for. Man must prepare for the thing he asks for, when there isn't the slightest sign of it in sight. Man can only receive what he sees himself receiving. The children of Israel were told that they could have all the land they could see. This is true of every man. He has only the land with his own mental vision. You can control any situation if you first control yourself. In this instance, the man could never have demonstrated alone. He needed someone to help him hold to the vision. This is what one man can do for another. One gets too close to his own affairs and becomes doubtful and fearful. The friend, or healer, sees clearly the success, health, or prosperity, and never wavers, because he is not too close to the situation. Put away the lucky monkeys and call on the law of forgiveness, for man has power to forgive or neutralize his mistakes. It was a big moment in her life, for ladders had held her in bondage for years. She retraced her steps to the vault, and the ladder was no longer there. This is so often what happens. If one is willing to do a thing that he is afraid to do, he does not have to. It is the law of non-resistance. Someone has said that courage contains genius and magic. Face a situation fearlessly, and there is no situation to face. It falls away of its own weight. The explanation is that fear attracted the ladder on the woman's pathway, and fearlessness removed it. Thus, the invisible forces are ever working for man who is always pulling the strings himself, though he does not know it. Owing to the vibratory power of words, whatever man voices, he begins to attract. There is an old saying that man only dares use his words for three purposes, to heal, bless, and prosper. What man says of others will be said of him, and what he wishes for another, he is wishing for himself. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which spitefully use you and persecute you. Goodwill produces a great aura of protection around the one who sings it, 
and no weapon that is formed against him shall prosper. In other words, love and goodwill destroy the enemies within oneself. Therefore, one has no enemies on the external. There is peace on earth for him who sends goodwill to man. The Law of Non-Resistance Resistance is hell, for it places man in a state of torment. Instead of saying, divine ideas never conflict, the call will come at the right time, leaving it to infinite intelligence to arrange. I commenced to manage things myself. I made the battle mine, not God's, and remained tense and anxious. The bell did not ring for about an hour, and I glanced at the phone and found the receiver had been off the length of time, and the phone was disconnected. My anxiety, fear, and belief in interference had brought on a total eclipse of the telephone. Realizing what I had done, I commenced blessing the situation at once. I baptized it success and affirmed, I cannot lose any call that belongs to me by divine right. I am under grace and not under law. And I went back to say that divine ideas never conflict. The call will come at the right time, leaving it to the infinite intelligence to arrange. Agree that the adverse situation is good as quickly as possible. Be undisturbed by it, and it falls away of its own weight. None of these things move me, is a wonderful affirmation. The inharmonious situation comes from some inharmony within man himself. When there is in him no emotional response to an inharmonious situation, it fades away forever from his pathway. One is often cured of his faults by seeing them in others. Life is a mirror, and we find only ourselves reflected in our associates. A woman came to me complaining that she had no money with which to buy Christmas gifts. She said, last year was so different. I had plenty of money and gave lovely presents, and this year I have scarcely a cent. I replied, you will never demonstrate money while you are pathetic and live in the past. Live fully in the now and get ready to give Christmas presents. Dig your ditches and the money will come. She exclaimed, I know what to do. I will buy some tinsel twine. Christmas seals and wrapping paper, I replied. Do that and the presents will come and stick themselves to the Christmas seals. This too was showing financial fearlessness and faith in God. As the reasoning mind said, keep every cent you have as if you are not sure you will get any more ever. She bought the seals, paper and twine in a few days before Christmas, received a gift of several hundred dollars. Buying the seals and twine had impressed the subconscious with expectancy and opened the way for the manifestation of money. She purchased all the presents in plenty of time. Man must live suspended in the moment. Look well, therefore, to this day. Such is the salutation of the dawn. He must be spiritually alert, ever awaiting his leads, taking advantage of every opportunity. Thy will be done this day. Today is the day of completion. Every affirmation must be carefully worded and completely cover the ground. For example, I knew a woman who was in great need and made a demand for work. She received a great deal of work, but was never paid anything. She now knows to add wonderful service for wonderful pay. It is man's divine right to have plenty, more than enough. His barn should be full and his cup should overflow. This is God's idea for man. And when man breaks down the barriers of lack in his own consciousness, the golden age will be his and every righteous desire of his heart fulfilled. The more man knows, the more he is responsible for. And a person with great knowledge of spiritual law, which he does not practice, suffers greatly in consequence. The divine selection would have given perfect satisfaction and brought good to all. The divine pattern is the only safe pattern to work by. Desire is a tremendous force and must be directed in the right channels or chaos ensues. In demonstrating, the most important step is the first step to ask a right. Man should always demand only that which is his by divine right. Thy will be done, and not mine. And the curious thing is, man always gets just what he desires when he does relinquish personal will, thereby enabling infinite intelligence to work through him. I knew a man who wanted to buy a fur-lined overcoat. He and his wife went to various shops, but there was none he wanted. He said they were all too cheap looking. At last, he was shown one. 
the salesman said was valued at $1,000, by which the manager would sell him for $500, as it was late in the season. His financial possessions amounted to about $700. The reasoning mind would have said, you can't afford to spend nearly all you have on a coat. But he was very intuitive and never reasoned. He turned to his wife and said, if I get this coat, I'll make a ton of money. So his wife consented, weakly. About a month later, he received a $10,000 commission. The coat made him feel so rich, he linked himself with success and prosperity. Without the coat, he would not have received the commission. It was an investment paying large dividends. If man ignores these leadings to spend or to give, the same amount of money will go in an uninteresting or unhappy way. For example, a woman told me on Thanksgiving Day she informed her family that they could not afford a Thanksgiving dinner. She had the money, but decided to save it. A few days later, someone entered her room and took from the bureau drawer the exact amount the dinner would have cost. The law always stands back of the man who spins fearlessly with wisdom. According to your faith, be it unto you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If faith holds the vision steady, and the adverse pictures are dissolved and dissipated, and in due season we shall reap if we faint not, we are told that on this plain, man reaps where he has not sown. The gifts of God are simply poured out upon him. All that the kingdom affords is his. The continued state of bliss awaits the man who has overcome the race or world thought. A metaphysician once explained in this manner, he said, the only thing which gives anything weight in nature is the law of gravitation. And if a boulder could be taken high above the planet, there would be no weight in that boulder. And that is what Jesus Christ meant when he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He had overcome the world of vibration and functioned in the fourth dimensional realm where there is only perfection, completion, life, and joy. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Many passages in the Bible state that the battle is God's, not man's, and that man is always to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The student continued, How long must one remain in the dark? I replied, Until one can see in the dark, and casting the burden enables one to see in the dark. There is an old saying, No man is your enemy, no man is your friend, every man is your teacher. So one should become impersonal and learn that each man has to teach him, and soon he should learn his lessons and be free. Suffering is not necessary for man's development. It is the result of violation of spiritual law. But few people seem able to rouse themselves from their soul's sleep without it. When people are happy, they usually become selfish and automatically the law of karma is set in action. Man often suffers loss through lack of appreciation. No man is a success in business unless he loves his work. The picture the artist paints for love of his art is the greatest work. No man can attract money if he despises it. So man, in ignorance of the law, brings about his own destruction. All disease, all unhappiness, come from the violation of the law of love. Man's boomerangs of hate, resentment, and criticism come back laden with sickness and sorrow. Love seems almost a lost art, but the man with the knowledge of spiritual law knows it must be regained, for without it, he has become as sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. I have often been asked just how to make a demonstration. I reply, speak the word and then do not do anything until you get a definite lead. Demand the lead saying, infinite spirit, reveal to me the way. Let me know if there is anything for me to do. So I gave thanks that divine order was established in her mind, body, and affairs. People little dream of how their affairs react on the body. There is a mental correspondence for every disease. A person might receive instantaneous healing through the realization of his body being a perfect idea in divine mind, and therefore whole and perfect. But if he continues his destructive thinking, hoarding, hating, fearing, condemning, the disease will return. Jesus Christ knew that all sickness came from sin, but admonished the leper after the healing 
to go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon him. So a man's soul, or subconscious mind, must be washed whiter than so. For permanent healing and the metaphysician is always delving deep for the correspondence. Jesus Christ said, Condemn not, lest ye also be condemned. Judge not, lest ye also be judged. Wisdom's ways are always of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. When one has made his demands upon the universal, he must be ready for surprises. Everything may seem to be going wrong, when in reality it is going right. It proved that there is no loss, and when man takes his spiritual stand, he collects all that is his from the great reservoir of good. I will restore to you the years the lotus have eaten. The lotus are the doubts, fears, resentments, and regrets of mortal thinking. These adverse thoughts alone rob man, for no man gives to himself but himself, and no man takes away from himself but himself. Infinite Spirit, open the way for the divine design of my life to manifest. Let the genius within me now be released. Let me see clearly the perfect plan. Perfect self-expression will never be labor, but of such absorbing interest that it will seem almost like play. The student knows, also, as man comes into the world financed by God, the supply needed for his perfect self-expression will be at hand. Demand definite leads, and the way will be made easy and successful. A young boy asked me to speak the word for his coming examination at school. I told him to make the statement, I am one with infinite intelligence. I know everything I should know on this subject. He had an excellent knowledge of history, but was not sure of his arithmetic. I saw him afterwards and he said, I spoke the word for my arithmetic and passed with highest honors, but thought I could depend on myself for history and got a very poor mark. Man often receives a setback when he is too sure of himself, which means he is trusting to his personality and not the father within. The student must form the habit of practicing the presence of God every minute. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Nothing is too small or too great. I have seen a student often keep back his demonstration through resistance or pointing the way. He pins his faith to the one channel only and dictates just the way he desires the manifestation to come, which brings things to a standstill. The student's goal is poise. Poise is power, for it gives God power, a chance to rush through man, to will and to do its good pleasure. The student often delays his demonstration through belief in incompletion. He should make this statement. In divine mind, there is only completion. Therefore, my demonstration is completed. My perfect work, my perfect home, my perfect health. Whatever he demands are perfect ideas registered in divine mind and must manifest under grace in a perfect way. He gives thanks that he has already received on the invisible and makes active preparation for receiving on the visible. Infinite Spirit, give me a definite lead. Reveal to me my perfect self-expression. Show me which talent I am to make use of now. Man's freedom comes through fulfilling his destiny bringing into manifestation the divine design of his life. All the good that is to be made manifest in man's life is already an accomplished fact in divine mind and is released through man's recognition or spoken word. So he must be careful to decree that only the divine idea be made manifest, for often he decrees through his idle words, failure or misfortune. If one desires a home, friend, position, or any other good thing, make the demand for the divine selection. So prayer is command and demand, praise and thanksgiving. The student's work is in making himself believe that with God all things are possible. The divine serves the one who only stands and waits. Demonstrations often come at the eleventh hour because man then lets go, that is, stops reasoning and infinite intelligence has a chance to work. When a student is able to let go of his problem and cast his burden, he will have instantaneous manifestation. I made the statement. I deny this appearance of disease. It is unreal, therefore cannot register in his consciousness. 
This man is a perfect idea in divine mind, pure substance, expressing perfection. If a student tries to force a demonstration through the reasoning mind, he brings it to a standstill. I will hasten it, saith the Lord. He should act only through intuition or definite needs. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. Man should make an art of thinking. The master thinker is an artist and is careful to paint only the divine designs upon the canvas of his mind. And he paints these pictures with masterly strokes of power and decision, having perfect faith that there is no power to mar their perfection and that they shall manifest in his life the ideal made real. All power is given man through right thinking to bring his heaven upon his earth. And this is the goal of the game of life. The simple rules are fearless faith, non-resistance, and love. Affirmations from the book. God is my unfailing supply, and large sums of money come to me quickly under grace in perfect ways. Every plan my Father in heaven has not planned shall be dissolved and dissipated, and the divine idea now comes to pass. Only that which is true of God is true of me, for I and the Father are one. As I am one with God, I am one with my good, for God is both the giver and the gift. I cannot separate the giver from the gift. Divine love now dissolves and dissipates every wrong condition in my mind, body, and affairs. Divine love is the most powerful chemical in the universe and dissolves everything which is not of itself. Divine love floods my consciousness with health and every cell in my body is filled with light. My eyes are God's eyes. I see with the eyes of spirit. I see clearly the open way. There is no obstacles on my pathway. I see clearly the perfect plan. I am divinely sensitive to my intuitive leads and give instant obedience to thy will. My ears are God's ears. I hear with the ears of spirit. I am non-resistant and I am willing to be led. I hear glad tidings of great joy. I have a wonderful work in a wonderful way. I give perfect service for perfect pay. I cast this burden on the Christ within and I go.